Hello everyone, this is Akaim and welcome back to another episode of World of Warships and I'm finally showing off the tier 6 Japanese battleship, the Mutsu, and this is one of two Japanese premium battleships they finally added to the game. Uh, and the Mutsu is a very interesting character, uh, to say the very least. Um, she's very similar to, I guess, the Nagato, uh, very similar to the Nagato. Uh, in a lot of ways. All right, let's go quickly take a look at the stats. You have 58,400 points of health compared to the Fuso, which has 57,100. Now, if we take a look at the armor, quickly remove that. Citadel plating, you're looking at 25 uh, meters. The Fuso does have a deck slope, which is 76. Uh, and the main Citadel armor bu belt is about 305. The... Mutsu, uh, Mutsu, I almost said Mutsuki, it also has a slope, it's only 76 millimeters, so it doesn't have that additional 305 that does sit around her belt. So, yeah, she does tend to get uh, Citadel fairly easily compared to, say, the Fuso. I'm not saying that the Fuso won't, but it can happen, although the additional slope does allow... Uh, for thinner armor, which allows you to be a little bit quicker as well. Uh, the athwart ship is 254, uh, while the Fuso uh, is only 241. And the Nagato, which was very prone uh, to being citadeled uh, through the for uh, forward uh, bow armor, has now a 289. So that got a huge, huge buff. And you can see the armor layout is very similar to the Nagato, where it has this deck slope which does allow you to prevent being citadeled that easily. Now, there is obviously a slightly thicker armor around the front turrets, while the Mutsu does not have that. Not bad as far as uh, survivability, which is pretty decent. 24% torpedo protection. Uh, main guns is pretty decent. Um, there is some slight setbacks, though. Uh, for example, let's go ahead and take a look at the stats, and I'll, I'll talk about these shells. Uh, reload time is 30 seconds. Uh, turn times is very slow. It feels very slow. Maybe it's just me. Uh, it is 40 seconds on the turn time. The max dispersion is 214 meters and max HE damage is 6,500 with a 30% fire chance. Max AP damage is 12,400 and firing range is 20.4. And her AP does tend to lose a little bit of its velocity uh, while it's firing at long range. So, if we compare, say, the AP, which is using the 410mm AP slash APC Type 88, to the Fusos, which runs the 91. So, it doesn't do as much AP damage, which is slightly unfortunate, but it does have a higher penetration value. Uh, the Nagato, on the other hand, uh, is also using Type 91. So you can see the Mutsu does about the same damage as a Nagato, which is pretty fantastic considering it's a Tier 6. Uh, secondary guns aren't particularly great. Um, they have a 5 second reload, 2,100 points of HE damage with 8% fire chance, and a 4.2 kilometer range. Then you do have 20 140 millimeters. They have an 8 second reload time and they fire AP with a 2700 points of damage with a 4.2 range. So normally you probably won't be getting in close but it happens um, to say the very least it does happen because it leads into the next uh, part of the Mutsu which is her, her torpedoes. Her torpedoes are Pretty interesting to say the very least. She has four of them, all in single tubes. You have two on starboard, two on port. They have a seven kilometer range, 57 knots. Reload time is 21 seconds. Just, just, just uh, put it in comparison. Your torpedoes reload faster than your guns. So, not bad. Now, damage is 10,833. You can see that they are within the ship itself, so they are very protected. Not likely you'll actually lose them. Uh, I've yet to actually experience losing my torpedoes, but they are protected, but it does mean that you have to show off a lot of broadside just to get these torpedoes off. There's a very, very small firing arc, um, but they're decent. They're more of a last ditch effort. Highly recommend don't go running in. Try and get your torpedoes off. Uh, you will probably go down very, very quickly. 
because like I said, you have to show off a lot of broadside, and if it's against another battleship, uh, they can do a significant amount of damage. AA defense is abysmal. Your guns are just abysmal. You have three 7.7 millimeters. They have an average damage uh, per second of five with a one kilometer range. Then you have ones that go out a little further. They're two kilometers. They have a ma average damage of 16 and two kilometers. And then your additional secondaries also work. And they have an average damage of 40 with a range of 50. Now, granted, you probably could get advanced firing training if you want to boost your AA or even basics firing training. Your AA is terrible. Um, if a carrier spots you and knows this, they will probably go after you. I would highly recommend any CV, if you see a Mutsu, and if it's not me, go after it. Uh, you could probably easily take it down because it just does not do that great of a job against aircrafts, especially higher tiers. If you are up against a tier 7 or 8, which can happen, it sucks, but if so, yeah, I'd stay close to a good AA cruiser to stay alive a little bit longer. Moving on to maneuverability, it is pretty decent. It is actually about 0.2 knots faster than the Nagato. It's obviously faster than the Fuso by around 2 to 3 knots. Max speed is 26.5, so very, very nice. Um, not very sluggish. Uh, her turning circle radius is kind of big, 770 meters. Uh, which is bigger than the Fuso and is the same as the Nagato. Rudder shift time is 11 seconds, which is not too bad. It's about the same as the Nagato. Um, but usually what I experience is when you are doing a hard turn, your guns tend to be pulling off from, from your reticle. So something to keep in mind, your guns actually turn a little bit slower and can't really keep up with the turning. And that's usually what you experience with Japanese battleships. Uh, I think until you get to the Amagi, I believe. Uh, concealment. Now, do keep in mind, my captain is a lowly five-point captain. Uh, actually, a four-point captain. Sorry. Four points. Uh, so, not probably the best right now, but you could probably get it down to at least 15 or even 14 kilometers, somewhere in that range. Detectability range by sea is 16.4. If I did not say, say that already, uh, detectability range by air is 13.3. So as far as modules, uh, almost always the same, very similar. Once again, you won't be getting a fighter craft till you get to tier seven and you have a spotting craft. It's all right. Uh, it does extend your range out to, uh, let's see, 24. If I did my math right, I think I did. Yeah. Pretty certain. Around 24 uh, kilometers, which is pretty decent, but not something I overly recommend. I almost just recommend use it uh, if you need a different camera angle or you need to spot uh, any torpedoes slash destroyers. So as far as what I would recommend, I almost probably recommend just normal build for battleships, or at least what I do. Uh, I went for preventive maintenance, did not go for detection center for catapult. Uh, just a different aspect, rather go for uh, preventing loss of my AAs because once again, your AA is terrible, but it's better than nothing. Uh, then I went for expert marksman, which does uh, allow you to traverse your guns a little bit quicker. Probably superintendent, superintendent then uh, concealment expert. Then you have a choice of what you want to do next. I would probably say Adrenaline Rush. Uh, this will obviously increase your reload rate. Uh, maybe even going for Vigilance would be beneficial. Uh, but if you want, I uh, highly don't recommend it, but you can go for Advanced Firing Training or Basics Firing Training. It's an interesting Tier uh, 6 Japanese battleship. It's not bad. Um, does not do that well against higher tiers. I will admit that. Uh, she does have slight issue against going up against higher tiers. Um, but if you are in your tier, you can actually do a significant amount of damage. And having those additional torpedoes does allow you to at least fight your way uh, through a close quarter combat. Uh, which you will be seeing in a this replay. replay. So, I'll see you guys there.
all right everyone welcome back to a replay in the mutsu and we are currently playing on neighbors playing standard battle we have a ruho a shan horse nagata mutsu new york congo york cleveland marblehead buskavika farragut and a hatsuharu on the enemy team there is a ruho colorado nagato bayern congo miyoko graspe omaha atasuki Fergit and two Nicholases. And unfortunately for him, for me, I am bottom tier, which, well, actually, no, I'm mid tier, uh, since there are some tier fives in this game. Now, being mid tier is not the worst thing in the world. Uh, fortunately, we are not facing against tier eights. That is quite terrible. The Mutsu does not really do that well when combating against higher tiers, such as the Amagi or North Carolina. Uh, the armor piercing shells on the Mutsu are, they're okay, they're kind of lackluster, they won't do as much damage as compared to say the Fuso or the, obviously the Nagato, they use a much different type of armor piercing shell, but overall the Mutsu is not too bad. Now when I got the Mutsu, she, or better yet, I was unlucky and uh, got into quite a few battles where I was bottom tier or very low tier and this is probably the most exciting battle I had with her. Now this is obviously uh, right before the update, the update of 0.6.2, I think right before the uh, Russian split. Uh, the update is actually coming, so I'm quickly recording this replay uh, because I did want to show it off because it does demonstrate quite a few capabilities of the Mutsu. Now, we do open fire against that Omaha, and unfortunately for me, uh, it looks like he actually turned away. Obviously, whenever you're in an Omaha, you are going to get fired at very quickly because you have a soft, vulnerable side. Especially when you show it off, it really does land a hand on who's going to be shooting at you now i am going to be pushing southwest i do have a friendly two friendly destroyers in front of me the atasuki does pop up he is being harassed by the hatsuharu and i believe the bliskavika is trying to help the enemy carrier is bringing in dive bombers against the enemy sean horst hopefully he doesn't come for us now the mutsu does not have a fighter plane you are still stuck with a spotting craft, which, I mean, is not the worst thing in the world. You can at least extend your range, but the range is pretty, pretty decent uh, for the Mutsu. 20.6 kilometers. You can pretty much uh, go anywhere. Now, our carrier, I really don't know what he is planning on doing. I guess he's hoping to get in a good position, but he's being torpedoed by the enemy carrier and enemy carrier i don't think actually does a very good job on the drop i think our friendly cv gets away with only maybe one or two one or two torpedo hits something like that maybe not even that so i think he's trying to go for that island trying to be in a more opportunative position at least as far as getting his planes back quicker. I don't really understand. Uh, so, anyways, uh, Congo is 17.2 kilometers. Open up a salvo, and yet, and yet, I have ha not hit anything. I haven't really had a good luck with that. Another salvo kind of misses, uh, which is unfortunate. Now, as far as what I think about the Mutsu, it's it's interesting. It's a first premium japanese oh no it's not the first premium it's the second uh technically the suzuki uh is, was the first premium japanese battleship but it's a tier four and this is the first higher tier at least highest tier we've seen so far and it's a interesting ship uh probably the main gimmick at least when i saw it if you did not know i actually saw it uh before it came out by a super tester and i kind of uh, geeked out a little bit because I saw the potential for torpedoes. Yes, uh, the Mutsu does have torpedoes. Not a lot of them. Uh, they are very quick firing and the Bleskovica is trying his best to uh, combat against a Nagato, Grash Bay, and Congo. The Congo is pushing in quite heavily. The Nagato is sitting at range. I'm not detected, which is actually really nice. And the enemy team has lost almost all of their destroyers and one cruiser while we've only lost one 
uh, destroyer. Now I am finally spotted. The Congo f comes around, open up a salvo, and battleship dispersion. But hey, we get a citadel due around 12,400. So our very first hit of the game nets us a citadel, which is always very nice. Now the crash bay opens up with some HE, probably designed for that Bliskovica. But obviously, since that Bliskovica is in smoke, he can't be really far. Uh, fired upon. Now the enemy carrier is bringing his attention to me. His dive bombers are incoming. Open up another salvo against this broadside Congo and we net ourselves a citadel and grants us our very first kill of the game. Very nice. Now I'm trying my best to dodge and weave uh, this against these dive bombers. Uh, we'll, we'll see how lucky I am. First drop missed us. Second drop lands and starts to fire while the grass spray also opens up and hits us with a fire. Now the grass spray is turning away. He obviously realized he was showing quite a bit of broadside and at this angle, I don't know if we can net ourselves. Trying to ascertain the proper aiming. He is going fairly slow. Do aim kind of closer to his ship and battleship dispersion goes all over. Now our team is doing a fantastic job. The I guess the carrier's position was beneficial because he's actually getting planes out very, very quickly and landing on target and bringing them back. Now the enemy carrier is coming in and I think he actually just spotted that destroyer, which is actually very fortunate for me. Because I think, is he? Nope, nope, he, he's going after me. Okay, time for some torpedo beats going to be turning in as best as we can. Now the Mutsu is obviously not a very agile uh, just agile battleship. His first salvo kind of locks us into position. Kind of a good idea. Not probably the best drop I've seen. I would almost say do a cross drop. That would have done maybe a little bit better. Uh, we do knock off one plane but I think we are going to be hit by one torpedo but caused no flooding and only did around 6,000 points of damage. Now, during that time, we did lose our friendly Bleskovica, which is unfortunate. He did finally go down. I don't know exactly to. Let's take a look to the friend enemy Nagato, which is unfortunate. So I do feel bad for not being able to help him, but I was unfortunately turned aside due to those torpedo planes. Now I am going to go ahead and bring my guns back towards uh, the possible location of the Nagato. Now going up against a Nagato, the Nagato does have very high penetrating shells on the armor piercing and against our armor will overpin our bow armor. So we do have to be careful against this Nagato. This Nagato can easily citadel and it looks both Looks like both the Nagato and the Grash Bay are both pushing back towards Cap. The friendly destroyer is trying to Cap. He is being harassed by a enemy cruiser. Uh, and I'm guessing the CV finally spotted him. The Hatsuharu is probably going in for a torpedo, kit on, torpedo kill on the enemy CV. Now the Nagato finally comes around. Fortunately, he's not looking at us. Open up a salvo. Let's see and only one penetration okay now the nagato obviously realizes that there is a mutsu just off his port bow and the grass spray is showing us a nice beautiful broadside let's see if we can actually deal damage now the grass bay's armor piercing is obviously a battleship caliber and can do significant amount of damage and I'm going to try to turn in to negate any possible damage coming from this Nagato. And you don't want to show a perfect broadside against the Nagato. You have to kind of show this angle somewhat. But unfortunately for me, he still pens our armor and does at least two or three citadels. But we are at such close range. The Grash Spray has dropped torpedoes and is probably going to be dropping his other torpedoes. So I'm actually going to be trying to turn in as quick as possible. And here comes the fun part, the torpedoes on the Mutsu. Now the torpedoes on the Mutsu reload very, very quickly. There are the Grass Bay torpedoes. Drop my torpedoes against Nagato. Take one hit from the Grass Bay. And we do get a kill against the Nagato. Torpedoes away against the Grass Bay and get 
double strike. Very, very nice. Very nice. So I guess that was a pretty good demonstration against the for the torpedoes. As you can see, our torpedoes are ready again. They reload uh, very quickly uh, compared to your guns. They actually reload faster. Not something I would recommend. Don't go charging in and using your torpedoes. No, they're more of a last last measure, as you saw there, uh, combating against two enemy uh, ships. So yes. Yeah, pretty, pretty, pretty decent. Uh, was very beneficial that they were on two different sides of my ship, so I was able to get both away, and we survived that. So I think this is probably gonna be it. All that's left on the enemy team is the destroyer, and we won. So that was a quick look at a, the Mutsu, the tier six Japanese premium battleship, and overall not a bad battleship. So this is gonna be it for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching, and if you like what you saw, hit the like and subscribe button. You guys have a great and fantastic day. Zai Jen.